What's up? up? This is Draco. And this is Alicia. And you're now tuned in to OD, OD Podcast. Podcast. Oh, <laughs> Period. Um. Five, four, three, two, one. Make that ass jump like a cow. So I ain't been taking my medicine for the last three days. I think that's you actually just like what... you. You who Lotto was talking about. What you said? She said something, something, something. She must ain't took a med. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what she said? What? How do the song go? She said. Um. She thought I would kiss her ass. She must ain't took a med. Yeah, oh. She must be sick. See. Speaking of meds. So, so the problem is that I think that the medication be working right. However. This past weekend, I went out more than usual. And so the medicine definitely says don't drink. And I think the problem is that um, I would take it in the morning, like when I wake up. And then, of course, I wouldn't drink until later that day. But, but I still like do think that it has some uh, has an effect on it. Because For sure. I'm taking an antidepressant and then uh, alcohol is a depressant, especially te- tequila. So, oh yeah, it's on it's, you on that Forest Whitaker. You up so and down. I be having crazy thoughts, not crazy thoughts, but Ooh. I just my thoughts be all over the place, and I and I'm like, let me just lay off these. I thought you stopped drinking when you started back. Um, I do drink. I drink. I don't drink as much as I did before, but I only I'm, I'm a social drinker. I don't drink in the house. I just drink when I go out. Oh no! I just I remember we talked. I remember you, okay. This is what I remember. We was this when I lived in Tucker. You had said you stopped drinking, and then you said you only in Tucker. Time. You know how many drinks I've had since then. How I'm supposed to know? <laughs> since you lived in Tucker, that was two thousand and what? Nineteen. Nineteen. I just I, remember us talking about it on the show, and you said you were stopping for like health reasons, but you would still drink wine. I thought, and I remember saying like, isn't wine alcohol? Oh, uh, I think and back then, then I that was because I actually had something going on. I forgot what happened to me, but um, yeah. Okay. So well, definitely, I stopped drinking too because of um heartburn. But I don't really be getting heartburn no more because I don't eat as unhealthy as I did. So oh, okay, that definitely okay. I don't know. But I do be drinking. I can't be social okay. without drinking. Really? Dang. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm at a party or a, a event or something, and I don't drink. That means you addicted. You no, dependent. I, I'm dependent on it, but I'm not addicted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to go Two to Two different AA. things now. You need to go to LAAA. I don't have to have it. Like I can go without liquor for a long time. Like I don't have to have it. But if I'm going oh, out, yeah. if I'm going out to make it a little bit more comfortable for me, I do need a drink. That right. that. In order for me not Maybe to you don't like it. going out then. I genuinely don't. I told you that I I, mean, I pretty much have to that because I live here and I don't really know people. And this is just how people meet people out here. Bumble BFF. <laughs> so, Bumble? No, nah, I ain't getting on no line. No app. Um, okay, well. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It ain't that I don't like going out. I think that the I've come to the conclusion that the problem is the music. LA DJs suck. Oh wow! So bad they dry, they dry you to drink. I gotta do something to have fun while I'm in here, and I ain't finna do nothing else. So yeah, they, don't, they be playing. They be playing. You're a jerk. I know you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? Everybody been there doing the cat daddy. Anyway, okay. <laughs> the freaking cat daddy. What did you do this weekend? You let me tell you something. No say I don't know if you I don't know, but before <laughs> no. it seemed like you you never really did a lot, but these past couple weeks, ever it's, since it's, you went ever since the Usher concert, you've been outside. It's but well, two things. COVID had me shut down. I was not playing with these folks, not doing nothing, not going. I was going places, but I was very careful about it. But also, I had just stopped posting stuff because I just felt like people was just knowing too much. Even though I didn't post much before, I -hmm. stopped posting for it. And I started just only doing monthly recaps. You know how I do like a June dump, May dump. That's what I had been doing. And now I'm just like, whatever, let me just post it. But it, uh, yeah, I don't like I don't like that kind of sharing. I don't like people responding to stuff that I post. <laughs> Just tap and go, <laughs> tap and go. I don't want you know. I don't like my I don't like getting notifications. I don't want comments. I don't want nothing. 
You just want to exist in a world where nobody communicate with you, but yes, I like the idea of posting and thinking that nobody sees it. When I tweet and I get a lot of response, I'd be like, "Why are y'all replying to my tweet? I hate it." Because I might say something that's like weird or shady, and then I'm like, "Okay, I was this supposed to go into like um that girl who was tweeting about Zanique Child? She was tweeting into oblivion. To me, I tweet into oblivion. So when people start reacting to it, I'm like, "Where did y'all come from?" And it be people I know. I get it, but I don't want attention from the app. So I just but yeah, so I've been post I've I've been posting the stuff that I do instead of just waiting for my little monthly recap. But we about to go back to that. So hope it was fun. Hope it was yeah. worth it. <laughs> Mind you, um, I was driving maybe like a week and a half ago, and there is a whole mural of Sheikha in LA somewhere. I forgot what yeah. I seen. I was like, what the fuck? This lady is from Alabama. Like, what does she have a mural here for? You sure it's her? It wasn't. It was um, her. It was. It like was. Busta it was Rhymes her. or somebody. Okay. okay. Busta Rhymes. <laughs> That lady crazy. I don't. I mean, I you know I'm all for like understanding mental health, but that lady will go read you and ask for sympathy in the same sentence. I genuinely don't understand. But Sounds um, like somebody I know. Anywho, move on from that, okay. or I used to know rather. Oh, but you asked um, about my weekend. Okay, so this weekend, um, so I did go to the mill. Well, actually, Melanie Fiona was on Monday. Uh, let me look at my calendar. What I did Saturday. Uh, me and Hazel went to the Beltline on Sunday. I try to walk like a couple of miles a day, and I feel like the Beltline was a good change of scenery. Saturday, I don't think I really did much. How far is the Beltline from you? Like, is it like, like a long Like 20 distance? minutes. It's not far. You know what's crazy? Because I live right off of 75, my commute has not changed from where I lived before. And I live like six minutes further than I did. But because I'm off 75, I get to everything so quick. I still get to Atlanta Station in 18 minutes. I can mm. get to the airport in 30 minutes. Like, everything is pretty good. But, um... This weekend is my family reunion, and I got, I mean, I got, like, two two different events. So, the family reunion is Friday through Sunday, but I'm not going to all of them. And then Sunday, my, my college is having, like, an alumni game at the um at the Battery. So, I'm mm. going to go do that, do some networking and stuff like that. Clayton State be so happy to have me come to stuff. They be wanting me to do, like, speak to students and all the other stuff. I'm like, y'all okay. ain't got no success stories? That's called, that's called an influencer. No, I don't, I don't want that kind of attention. But um, but yeah, I'm doing that. So we're gonna have a pool party, a family brunch, a family dinner, and um, then that's it. I mean, I guess it's back to Monday, and next way we're gonna do it again. What so, about you? What you did this weekend? Um, my friends came to visit. Some of my friends came to visit from New yeah, York. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> okay, sorry, so um, yeah. some of my friends came to visit from New York, um, Houston, New York, and Atlanta. <clears throat> so I was doing like touristy stuff with them, not for real, because it was stuff that I really didn't do. Um, but I had an amazing time. I spent a lot of money, but I don't regret it because I really mm-hmm. did enjoy myself this whole weekend. Like I really did. I really did enjoy myself. Um, Sunday, I stayed out to like six thirty. You, I don't do that. So six thirty p.m. No, I had fun. Fun a.m. Oh. <laughs> and I had to be at the haircut. I mean, I said I had to be at the haircut. I had to be at the barbershop at ten. 10 30 so i was like miserable that whole sunday because when i got when i got back it was time to go to brunch so i did not sleep i did not sleep that day. i think i had like three hours of sleep so i'm still yeah, like one thing i don't play about is my sleep i'm sorry i usually don't i usually don't play about my sleep because i just don't be i don't like to look worn out and old so mm-mm. but i had an amazing time i went to this restaurant called castaway in burbank that was so nice um, the view was nice. The food was cool. The drinks were really good. Um, I had mimosas. They had like mimosa flavors I ain't never heard of. Like one of them was like a lavender lemonade, lavender charcoal lemonade mimosa. Bye. I want the virgin one. <laughs> <laughs> Give me it orange juice. So it was <laughs> so good. Um, and then I went to Cat Steak. I had a good time there. That food was really good. Um, but oh, overall, I did have fun. I had fun. When um, I, I felt like I needed again. that. I felt like I needed that because I haven't been home in a minute and I ain't seen nobody. And I was getting like very homesick and Aww. sad. I've been very sad lately just because I've been wanting Aww. to come home. And I felt like that okay. helped me. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and go to the Beyonce concert in Atlanta so I can use that time to come see my family and friends. Yeah, pull up. Pull up on me and Hazel. Pull up on us. Um, yeah. what I'm gonna say though, um, when I come to California again, you gotta meet me in San Diego or something. I just cannot bring my San Diego. Let's see how far it is from me right now as we speak, because I feel like it's like three, it's like an hour and a half maybe. 
It's not that far. I don't think. You don't think, or you don't know. To pay for another. So well, what's going to... on with the? So what's in San Diego? That's two hours and forty minutes. There's traffic There's right now. There's nothing there, but I just don't want to. I just do. I just have. I don't like going to the same place more than once. I know that sounds crazy. Okay. I get it. But I if I'm going to go, I don't want to pay for it. And if I'm paying to come out of this, okay, this is my dilemma right now. After my, okay, so I'm going to South Africa and then I'm going to uh, Minneapolis for a work trip. And then after that, I need 400 more miles to make um, silver status. I know that's the, like, the baby one, okay? But I want to make it. So I got to <laughs> find somewhere to fly to. I might just like fly to Savannah or something. Girl, what? Go to Miami. I just need, I just need a, why? That's longer than, so that's, I, I just need to go up in the air it's and land. Quick. It's like a 30 minute flight. No, it's not, that is not. No 45 30 minutes. minutes from Atlanta, the flight from Miami, yes it is. It's not, you said 30 minutes, then you said 45, when in reality it's one hour. Now, okay, I'm thinking about Orlando. I've flown from Orlando, it was like 30 minutes. So but, why should not, why can't I just fly to Savannah? That's even closer. What is in Savannah, girl? It's you nothing to see. There. I just want to know. That's it's not about visiting. I just need to book a flight, complete the trip, so I can get the miles. Uh, okay, well, why don't you book somewhere that you that you could actually benefit from going, like that you would want to visit? Because I feel like Savannah, you can drive there. Yes, I thought about that, but the place I want to go to is not going to be the season for that. I want to go like in the spring or the top of next year. So I'd rather just throw girl, some, drive, just get a throwaway. Drive Minnesota like, or something. Like why would you? I go am to going. Though? That's what's putting me closer. I'm going to Minnesota in October, and so I just need 400 miles. So I need I'm at least. I was joking. What the hell are you going to Minnesota for? What is this? That's Minnesota? my job. It. Ah, uh, I knew that. I knew that. I don't been to Minnesota two times this year. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I knew Not that. you using my job as a throwaway city Listen, the whole time. It's I try to I try to explain this to my friends. I think I've been I, th- I literally said I'm going to Minneapolis. I think that I um I've been in LA too long that I've like I haven't like blocked out completely my Atlanta life, but I'm fully engulfed in LA right now. Like I've been I've been having too much fun. I've been meeting a lot of people. I've so been, much I've been, fun that you forgot I just said I, I'm going there already. I'm sorry. I ain't blame California. It ain't even that. It's just that I mean I have seventy thousand things going on. That it's okay. Atlanta Thank you for the right suggestion. There. I'm already going. Let's get into okay. the episode. I um, so I do not have a black business. That's crazy. <laughs> so in real time, y'all, we are going to uh get a black business together. Okay. Hello. Okay. Well, why All you right. doing that? Let me grab something. What's okay. popping? So let me tell you a quick story. So um, I used to work at the Apple store, right? Actually, I don't want to say that. Why? I, well, I already said it. Everybody know I, you worked at Apple well, store. Well, it's not that. It's not that. It's this person also worked there. Okay, long oh. story short, y'all. TikTok showed me a video of this girl. And I mentioned her on the show before, but I, I, don't, I don't think I ever shouted out her, um, her presence on the internet. So long story short, TikTok showed me a video of this black woman who bought an RV um, to live out of a camper or some yes, yeah, a van. It's a van. She bought a van to live out. She she is living out of a van. She decked it out, made it her home, so that she can um, you know, number one, live in a minimal lifestyle, and so she can really pursue her dreams of being a full time creator, which she's actually brought to fruition. So then one day I'm at the Apple Store and I'm talking to my friends, and they're like, "Yeah, such and such." Um, live. One of my other coworkers talked about doing the same thing. He wants to sell his house, buy a van, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, yeah, such and such does it. I'm like, man, that's so funny. This girl on TikTok I just saw did the same thing. They were like, oh, it's probably Sydney. And I'm like, nah, it was this girl on TikTok. They were like, yeah, it was probably Sydney. Long story short, it was the girl who worked at my guy. She worked at my old job. So anyway, so I was talking to her. I really um, was really impressed with, you know, the, the moves that she made to pursue a full-time career as a creator. And she actually makes solid, you know, a lot of people, and TikTok is really that trend now where people go to a restaurant, go to a place, they leave a review. But Sydney, like, goes to places that you probably did not even know existed. And she's not even from Atlanta. She's from Kentucky. And so, for example, one of the businesses that she visited the other day was um it was called cake and sip so basically you go to this place and it's a cake making class so you learn how to make a cake you can have like private parties private events things like that you bring your own alcohol yada 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 but i thought that was really cool because i've been seeing this uptick in trends of cake creators it's like a real 
a real intense it industry. So fun. I would love to do that. Yeah, and I thought it was really cool. And so it's a couple of other businesses that Sydney has like done a review for that might have started off with three hundred followers and they end up with forty thousand followers, bro, because of her like her thorough reviews. And I mean, legit, the stuff that she posts is not like the typical. It's not. She don't focus on food. She really focuses on experiences and it's stuff that like a lot of stuff that she'll even pay herself just to get a good quality review. But I I really have gone to stuff like when I went to um. A couple of weeks ago, me and my cousin, we went to a uh, like a screen on a green thing. We watched The Wiz. And it was because Sydney had done a review on it. And now I follow the THD Backyard where they have like free events at the um, Mercedes-Benz Dome. Uh, anyway, I just want to shout her out. So on Instagram, her name is Sydney Rose. Um, S-Y-D-N-E-Y-Y-R-H-O-D-E-S-S. So there's a couple of extra Y's and S's. Nonetheless, the information will be on the episode notes. But I think she, I, I really um appreciate the type of the type of influencing that she does because it's very wholesome and natural. It's not like a, it's just, it's just realistic. Like she'll review racetrack at the gas station. Like it's just a yep. very like interesting, you know. I, uh, I can't it's even it's get my thoughts. Interesting out. take on um company reviews Con- pretty much yeah it's and it's really cool and she even when she travels in her van she'll go places she reviews places in different cities like maybe it's just it's just really cool i really appreciate it. i think it's very and it's very like it's just it's just wholesome that's really all i can say during <laughs> so- the pandemic I, during the pandemic i found myself following so many freaking influencers and just people who lived in vans just because their life was so interesting um, this one girl, I used to watch her videos all the time on YouTube. Her name is Janelle, but she used to live in her van um, in California. And this is before mm-hmm. I moved here. So I was just watching her stuff to, to learn about the different beaches and stuff she would be going to because that's what she would sleep at. She would park her van on the beach. She would wake up in the morning, do her morning routine, go to the gym, take a shower, and then go on her day. And so her life was just so interesting. In my head, I'm like, she gets a lot of views. So I know she getting a lot of money from these videos. And then within like two years, she bought a ranch. So now she lives on a ranch somewhere oh, in period. California. She still got her vans. She got like three vans now. She got like, an- she just started buying animals and stuff. She got like ducks, chickens. She got a dog. What part of California is she in? Um, I have no clue. Hmm, that's interesting. Know. You know, I really admire people that can do that, but genuinely, you know how I feel about real estate. If, when people sell their oh, houses yeah, to do that, I'm like, man, ain't no equity in that van. Uh, <laughs> you know what, then what if it start working? Yeah, I mean, and I mean, I'm. It's not like they stop. They stop having jobs, so they can repair it. But it's just, I think for me, it's where they sleep. You know, you have to park in a certain place. There are RV, RV facilities, RV parks, and stuff like that. But maybe that's not always accessible. But I think it's pretty cool that people can have an alternative lifestyle. And I'm glad that people are open to it. Uh, I think social media has really um created an avenue for people to live exactly how they want to live and not be looked at as weird because you know people have a perception of people that live in trailer homes and stuff like that but now i see videos about people advertising trailer homes like you can get this home for the low you can get all these features which is like a regular house now i'm not into it but i wouldn't be opposed to it if i had to do what i had to do you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah so i think that's pretty cool but yeah as for me give me an upstairs downstairs with a two-car garage asap I, I, don't I don't know, know what I want. I've been um I've been like trying to figure out just I've I've honestly just been having like real conversations with myself about what I want out of life. Um You're not sure yet? I don't know. It changed I feel like it changes so often, but like especially like when it comes to what I want to live in, I just do I can't and I could be wrong, but I just do not picture myself living in no big ass house. You should well. You shouldn't feel like you have to have that if you don't want it. That's your business. I don't. I don't. I don't feel like that's me. Like I would rather a penthouse or a condo or something, or like a, a, a nice size one. Not like I will get the most dramatic size. Do you feel like you have to get a house? Like what makes you say that you don't want it? Is it because you feel like I don't? To- well, okay. So because I don't really have any businesses of my own. So that yes, will you be do. Like, you literally are an entrepreneur. You literally work. For I mean, outside of this, outside of the one that I'm, I'm working. Okay. I'm just saying, like, so I feel like, I feel like, I need that to have some, some equity in the future. You know, it's a little money. I you said you properties. 
You need, need you saying have, you need extra businesses. Okay, I'm trying to, sorry, I, I want to make sure. I, need, I want to have extra businesses so that way I can have other money coming in outside of yeah. just doing makeup. No, I can understand that. Yeah, that should always Literally, be. That's my, only, that's my only source of income at the moment, and it's annoying because... Child. Yeah, things can change at any moment. No, I can understand that. That's always been my agenda, so I definitely am an advocate for it. And um, Hazel, what's up? I think her toy might be stuck in something. Hold on, because she is. Oh wild. my gosh! I know. Hold on. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about what you want. You know, this is my my favorite thing to talk about. So you know for sure you want to do something else outside of makeup, which is fine. That's what everybody wants to do. Do you know what that is? What that looked like? Not like if you could if you could have another business or something that you are working towards. Like what is that? Um, so honestly, I've been, I've been like really getting comfortable with just be myself being a brand outside of my business, Mm -hmm. like literally myself only because I get a lot of engagement on my profiles for my own things outside of my makeup, sometimes more than that. And I watch people monetize off of that all the time. And I've been on social media or known on social media since what? Since we was what? 17, yep, 16, yep. 17. And I'm 34 and it's still going on. Why have not, I'm not a millionaire off of this shit. So. No, I get it. Well, I don't late. have any advice for that. Now, well, let me ask you this though. With all the stuff that been, that's been going on, are you nervous to have social media as a source of income? Cause I no. think, cause I just feel like obviously you can make do with whatever is available to you, but I hate the idea of my, income being tied to something that I don't own because it's like when TikTok having issues, let's they, let's say they was about to ban TikTok, um, Twitter was having a, a rate limit reached, and Insta, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I just can't imagine this being my full-time job and I could wake up and my office closed, you know what I'm saying? I feel that, um, but I think that, that will allow me to open more doors. So say for instance, like if I start doing that, if... <clears throat> People are like gravitating towards me more so for skincare or something. I can come out my own skincare line. Yeah. Or I could either partner with another company and just make money like that. I don't have to come out with my own brand, but it will still be another source of income. That'll yeah. open up more doors for me to do that type of stuff. Do partnerships with brands. Do like, um, I'm even down to do like hosting. Like not no clubs or nothing, but just like I would do a, host a red carpet. Or event or something like that. You know you what I'm saying? Should, like I would do something like that. My cousin, you know, she's a full time writer and she like puts herself out there to say, Hey, I'm available for bookings for speaking gigs. Maybe you should just be like, Hey, I'm available if y'all need you know what I'm saying? Just put your just the speaking gigs, not so much, but well, I guess that would be considered consider a speaking gig. I would rather, I like more conversational things. So like Yeah, like commentator. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if you put, because you're already doing the podcast, it's not like you not you don't know how to work a microphone. So I think that you could start by just putting yourself out there, saying like, "Hey, I'm available for booking for this," or you know, anybody. You know, just you just never know for real, for real. People might be like, "I was wondering," but I was scared to ask you because I know you do all this. You just never <laughs> yeah. know who's watching for real, for real. But um, but one thing I will say is I think a cool, you know, again, like I, what I mentioned about the social media thing being kind of um fickle. If you when you start the other businesses, let's say you start a makeup line or a skincare line, et cetera, et cetera, you have ways to contact these people that are interested in you, like your, their phone numbers, their email addresses, their home addresses. So you have methods on um, being able to reach out to them if something does go down. So I always think about stuff like that, like um, just having multiple ways. Like let's say your, God forbid, your Instagram gets shut. Let's use somebody else for example. Let's say who lost they Let's say Boosie, right? I know you don't like Boosie, but Boosie had all these <laughs> followers on his Instagram page, and his page got took down. Now imagine if he wasn't who he was and he built these these this Instagram page and lost all these followers and he got to create a new page and all those people is gone. And it takes a lot and years sometimes to even build up that type of audience that's interested in you. And people might not necessarily put in their effort to try to locate your new page. So now you and your 10,000 followers, y'all just over here high-fiving each other because you all you got. But if you take those million followers and you create some kind of system where these people could contact you outside the app, if something happens, hey, y'all, I'm glad y'all been rocking me all million, y'all. Follow me over here or meet and greet me or you know just something just have a way to keep in contact with all those people because they are people that are interested in you but sometimes people you got to hold their hand a little bit so what i guess what i'm trying to say is just make sure you are able to um retain that audience wherever you go that's all i know i'm i'm, I'm trying to figure out how or what i'm gonna even start with because like i don't even know what where to even start yeah so, well, i don't know if the if easiest thing that would be, the easiest thing right now would probably be um to start 
in fashion, just because mm-hmm. I be wearing stuff. I take pictures all the time. So I want to start taking like better quality photos. Like even if I have to like get a professional photographer to take them, but that is going to be like my first intro to it. Cause like, I would rather get like, even if it's something small at like Fashion Nova, at least they paying. Cause Fashion hey, Nova one of my allowed. friends, one of my friends who got like 40,000 followers just got a, a, a ambassadorship with Fashion Nova. Let me see his page. I was like, you know oh, what I'm saying? And I they, they pay a lot he, of money. And all he, not all he do, not to like downplay it, but he literally takes like outfit of the day pictures all day, every day. He don't have partnerships with Nike. It's crazy. Oh, here you go. Oh, he got 38.1 thousand followers. And he follow a lot of people. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna maybe I should start doing that outfit of the day. I just don't want to start off in my drawers. Like I hate seeing them them videos. No, he doesn't do those. Like get ready with me. No. He just he just you'll see. <laughs> I just sent you his page, and I've seen I've run into him out in public doing these photos, and it'd be him and a bunch of friends all taking each other's pictures. And that's the problem that I'm having right now. Is just like I watch the community of like influencer guys. I hear that that do fashion and stuff like that they all cool with each other and they all shoot each other content they all um go to events with each other like they got their little tribe going mm-hmm. so i need to build me a little one two off of that but it's so hard trying to do that and that's another conversation for another day that's yeah, another no, I conversation feel you. for I, another day you've been interested but, in doing this for a long time but i do want you to just to, to actually pursue it you know even if it comes down to you making them come to you Create, create a start. Make it start however you want to start. Don't wait on nobody else. Just you know, just do it. Just be like, all right, I want to take these pictures every day. What I got to do? Hire a photographer. Perfect. I was just telling my friend he's going on a trip to New Orleans, and uh, on Airbnb Experiences tab, so it's next to the Stay tab under the Experiences tab. You can actually hire somebody to be your photographer while you're visiting the city. So he's going to have this photographer. Or he plans to have this photographer take pictures while he's out and about celebrating his birthday. So now he can have content for his birthday and something like that could be cool. Cause like, dang, they turned up and. New Orleans, where y'all going next? I'm interested now. I'm I'm tuned in. So I'm saying if you if you have something that you want to share, even if it requires you investing your own money, you will get that return some kind of way. But if you want to do it, I just don't want you to let time go by and be looking back like I should have. Because you don't you've been on social media longer than most of these people. You know what I'm saying? No, so you, it's no reason why you not you shouldn't be doing better than they are, especially mm-hmm. when you actually have an established presence and you are doing things that you actually work a job where you gotta make your money. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, no HR is cutting your check. So I'm just saying like it's definitely there. Just you know, just just make up a way to get started, and that's that's all I'm gonna say about that. Maybe I should create start a way. Maybe. You want to be a creator? Find create a way. A way. <laughs> I gotta find a way. You're right. I gotta um, I just gotta do it like Nike. Mm. That's right. Speaking of Nike, that's um, my friend who I sent you. I think he had a partnership with them too. But you know me, I, I my mind always thinks about okay, how can I make some more money? What can I do? What da, 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 da. Now, I don't want to be no creative, but I know if I tr- if I wanted to for real, I can get darned. And then you actually want to do it, so please go for it. Because before <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm... we're gonna be forty. They're gonna be like, sit your old self down. Tap the brown. It... But look, sure. look at, but look at that's in her. You're right. And Tabitha Brown got, she got a whole different kind of influence. I really, I really admire um, her story. That's why I don't put no age limit on stuff no more. That lady literally became a freaking famous in her forties, literally. Yeah, and then like, it, and it was, imagine it was, being was, married to her and still being supportive all this time, even on the back of your head. You like, listen now, Tab. <laughs> <laughs> it's done been a been a while. I know one thing about me. I'm I'm definitely retiring off real estate. Period. Point blank. And even when I think about that, I mean, people come to me all the time. They talk. They people ask me all the time about tips on how to invest in real estate. I'm like, just go buy something. And that's exactly what I did. And that and I never had to touch my own money ever again. It's like it really is that simple. I think it could be intimidating, but I don't want people to think that you got to have all this money because baby, I was making like eighteen dollars an hour, and I was just start just then starting to work full time. So. And obviously, I don't want things to seem easy, but I came from nothing, zip zero, and I've been able to acquire all these properties. And we came from the same street. You get what I'm saying? So I just, I just want people to not, you know, there is always a way, and you can, you can be the first person to create whatever that way is. So, you know, Mm. what you gotta do? Okay. Rip me out of plastic. I'm from the app brand new. Come on, come on. We all get to look at the same 24 hours as Beyonce. I don't get the same 24 hours as her. I really don't. So um, when people say that, they be lying. I don't get the same. I get um, the same 24 hours as Michelle Obama. That's a fact. When she go to sleep, she go to sleep on billionaire sheets and pillows. Why you can't have them pillows? 
because I don't have the money for that. You stay in the same state as Beyonce. You got access to everything she got. I'm, th- I'm staying. The, I literally stay in the same county as Beyonce. You get what I'm saying? So the sheets ain't no reason why you can't have them sheets. She used to have. I don't them have either. the funds. I don't have the funds. She ain't have them. She ain't always had the funds either. But she's had you know them for about 25 got. years, and you had social me. media for about 25 years. This is true. This is true. What else you got? Know. Let's change the subject. Okay. Cause ain't no such thing as I need to find a way. You make a way. That's how. That's how this thing works. You gotta make a way, like God right. would do. He preach, make a way preacher. when there seems to be no way. <laughs> All preach, right. Preacher. All right. Let's get into shop talk, man. Okay. So y'all, um, if y'all didn't know, and I think I said this on the show before, I have been a Kiki Palmer stand since day one. I'm talking about since Akila and a B and Draco can advocate for this. Remember when she came to Six Flags? Oh, they, they used to no. call me Kiki. They literally used to call me <laughs> Kiki Palmer. Matter of fact, the person that gave me that name, her sister doing my hair tomorrow, but they used to call me Kiki Palmer because oh, the day that Kiki Palmer came to Six Flags, I was so excited. I took a picture. I still got a picture on my phone when she was riding on my ride um, at the Batman. But I've always been a big fan of her because her, I think she is so down to earth, like very smart, very funny, very brilliant, and very witty like myself. And I always felt like if I ever met Kiki Palmer, I think we'd be really good friends. I think that we think similarly. She's a lot more creative than me and she's a lot quicker than me. But we are similar in the way that we think, or at least that's the way it, that's the way it appears. So anyway, um, Kiki Palmer had a baby uh, recently and she looks good okay when people be like on a scale of one to ten she on a scale of one to a million and she is a million and one i'm talking about she looked good so anyway she's had a crazy rebrand and i wouldn't even call it a rebrand maybe a resurgence over the last maybe year and a half where she has just been more visible um more vocal she's been on a lot more different platforms she's released her own platforms it started during the pandemic where she started creating her own content like playing mm-hmm. different character roles and things like that and people really liked it it got her a job hosting on good morning America. what's that what was that show with um Michael Strahan. Anyway, she was hosting on that. I think she was a fill in, and people really draw drew to her. And mind you, Kiki Plum, Kiki Plum is a black girl from Chicago. Really got this crossover style thing about her. I don't even like the word crossover, but we know even though she was on the Disney Channel, she still is a black girl. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so she did that. She's come out with her own production company, her own podcast, her own TV. I mean, she's really doing everything. So she had a baby in the midst of all this, and she, her boyfriend is a guy that many of us did not know who was the brother to Sharonis Jackson, who played Dro on Insecure. Okay, cool. Fast forward to all that. Now that we know who she is and who he is, she went to the Usher concert with this dress on, and it was a very nice dress, to be honest, but it had like a thong style bottom. So think like Leotard with a sheer cover up. Basically, her booty was out. And now, as somebody that went to the Usher show <laughs> back in March, he serenades a lot of the celebrity guests at the show. Now, I will say at my show, it was Kerry Washington. He was not. He ain't serenade her. He shouted her out. <laughs> but oh when he performs, there goes my baby. He whatever the whoever the lady um celebrity guest is that night. He was serenade them, sing with them, dance them, whatever. And in the past, it's gotten a little close. Like I know when he was serenaded Easter Ray, I was like, dang, sis just got married in the South of France. But if she cool with her, then whatever. Because I don't know their business. Somebody like me, stuff like that don't intimidate me. I don't really care because I'm me and it's I'm I'm that. You know what I'm saying? So you can dance with Usher, City Girls, Megan Style, whoever. It, I. It don't got nothing to do with body to come with quality of life. I'm that. Okay. So anyway, then her boyfriend basically tweeted, it's your dress though. You a mom. So he obviously acted like he ain't like her dress, even though he had posted a video of her twerking on his page. He posted a picture of her and her drawers cover her titties up with her arm. But she had a problem with this dress she wore to see Usher. I think the issue lie and how she how close she was to Usher because this guy is seemingly a nobody not as nearly as rich as Kiki Palmer not as popular not as famous and I feel like he in a position where all these people probably at him tagging him in this video with Kiki Palmer and Usher his homeboy's like yo bro what's going on the fact that he could actually lose his girl to Kiki Palmer probably created some insecurities and that's what we led to these tweets so I wanted to know your opinion on his reaction uh, to what Kiki Palmer was doing, your thoughts on the situation overall, and what you would do if you were in that situation. Um, first of all, let me start off by saying that I think that the smoke was already in the air prior I to I agree. I, th- I feel like the baby must have threw up on him. Kiki was in a <laughs> private jet. He just like, your mama died. <laughs> I think they was already beefing before that, or they already had some issues, because that just the way the comment was, yeah, it was just too much. Like, I literally, I, if you follow me on my Instagram, I literally post a video of Kiki Palmer in her brown pants. Dancing in her drawers. Every week. 
and he posted one of her wearing less than that. He He, did. He he recorded that video. You get what I'm saying? So in my head, I'm just like, uh, it was something going on. And Kiki always dressed sexy. Like she always, you know, was, you know, but I agree with you. I feel like it was something bigger than that. I feel like it was just how close she was with Usher. But I also feel like Kiki Palmer gives me the vibe that she is somebody that's so free that that wouldn't even be shocking. Because I, to me, I'm really big on trust. Stuff like that cannot bother me. I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling threatened by Usher. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care if he's a multi-millionaire and I got $2. That's how much, that's how highly I think of myself. So for him to even go as far as to even tweet that, and I hope that wasn't his first time addressing it because that's even crazier but i think that baby must threw up on him or something oh my god i don't think that he was um necessarily wrong for feeling like that but what i do think was wrong is that he did it publicly because you don't you never know what people conversations people have behind the closed yeah. doors you know yeah for i me, agree with you for me i'm a very very um i guess you would say traditional person oh that's what he said too <laughs> but he got but he got her pregnant before marriage which tradition yeah. is he talking about that's very true cuz I don't follow statistic. traditions. I don't follow traditions down to the T like that either. But I'm also not comfortable with the person that I'm dating posting I don't know. I'm if I'm with them like if we're out together and they want to wear something fine, but don't be trying to No, I don't know. Well, what's crazy is Kiki Pond didn't even post this video. Somebody else that's did. True. <laughs> but that's true. I ain't got I ain't got the reach of her, so ain't nobody else going to be recording me and post it. But I do it's understand didn't even why no he like that, yeah. and I also, but I see both sides. Like I feel like they're they they're in a relationship. He should be comfortable, know who he's dating. Um, they should have an understanding exactly. about some certain exactly. things, and so that shouldn't have been an issue for real. But I understand his. I understand the feeling sometimes. Sometimes you just have a vulnerable moment. Yeah, his feelings are valid just, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to take away from that. I just feel like it shouldn't have been done publicly. That's something that y'all can talk about, argue about behind the scenes. Nobody would know. I agree. Now you can I, agree. I feel like the situation probably couldn't even been that serious, but since it was public, everybody had put that two cents in plus sex. Hey, so the, baby, just... the baby won't cry when he hold. You know, people, you did pick up a baby, baby stop crying. Baby won't stop crying when you pick him up. You oh try to change God. the baby, pound the back. baby done pissed on him. Then he oh. threw up on her. Then she ain't pump enough milk to feed the baby. So now the baby won't go to bed. And she out here dancing with Usher. You know, my, you know, I just feel like I'm always going to advocate for relationships being off of social media. I don't want, I don't even want nobody to know if or when I'm dating. I don't want nobody to know when I'm doing nothing. Because even a situation like this welcomes the public into your relationship. And now any little lame thing he do, if they stay together, now they got to hear about it. You know what I'm saying? Versus yeah. handling stuff. Keep it player. Now, obviously, when you famous, it's only so much privacy you can have. But when, when your privacy is no longer private, it shouldn't be this. You know what I'm saying? It should be yeah. one of them, oh, uh, they was out eating that carbon last night and she had extra hot sauce. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just, I, I'm it, not it a- just depends on the, on the, first of all, you just have to know the person that you're dating. I feel like I've had this conversation already because it was a situation with Chris Brown or somebody who had brought people up on stage and he was grinding on them. And, and the I feel like that's was, been such a tradition at R and B concert, and not to justify, but I'm just saying this isn't even a new concept. That's true, but people don't dudes. It's it's all about ego, especially if somebody like Chris oh, Brown. Man. If it was somebody like, let me see. If it was somebody like Keith Sweat or something, they probably wouldn't give a damn. But the fact that it's Chris <laughs> Brown, Chris Brown is very young. He's accessible. He's young. He can he's, actually he's take your girl. He can, he can literally actually take, take your girl. girl. Just like Not Usher. Keith Sweat can't take your girl. But, but I, it's more realistic. Over there, I real. agree with you. I agree with you, Dad. And especially with Usher. You Usher know? is still extremely successful. He got a residency in yeah. Vegas. Okay. And I, you know. Yeah. I, like I said, his feelings are valid. I don't, I don't have a problem with your partner not being happy with what you're wearing. But I just, you know, just keep it off the internet. Like, for real. Kiki Palmer already didn't share who she was with until she got pregnant. It's like, dang. These bl-. And then her podcast, um, the episode. So the episode went live on a podcast app yesterday. But it goes live on another platform like a week before, which means they recorded this episode before this happened. And they were talking about how well he's handling dating a celebrity and how he keeps everything private. I said, oh, this did not age well. <laughs> this don't age like cheese. Oh my God. That junk, well, I said, oh my God. The stuff that they were saying, even her mother was on the episode speaking so highly of him and how well he, I'm like, oh baby. It, baby. it was the tweet the day before saying, oh I yes. Say I love my man. Yes. Yeah. Me. Yes, 
Listen, y'all, keep your relationships off the internet. I promise you, don't nobody care anyway until something going wrong. Just keep teasing. I've done it. I've done it maybe like twice, and I would never do it again. I don't even want people to know who I date for real, unless it's my close friends. And it has to be, we have to be talking for a long time. Yeah, I don't give a yeah, darn. I don't want to know about people being on dates. Just keep it because at the end of the day, any little detail you put out there is because you want people to know. And when they know yeah. what now, what now? What? What are they supposed to do about I it? Buy you some candy? Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, you lucky you get my wedding day picture. You lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and the only way that happens because everybody don't tag me. I'm like, all right, here, dang. Since y'all uh-huh. asking so much. Yeah, no, know? I'm very, I'm very. I'm very private. I don't care if you know, but you probably won't know no details about it. People and all. people do not wish you well. That's a fact. People don't care. They got questions. They want, you know, they just, uh, no, anyway, I don't even get into detail. But people are annoying and they weird and they don't got nothing going you. on for themselves. All I'm going to say is Kiki Palm Baby Daddy is Lily Kiki Palm Baby Daddy and not Darius uh, Jackson. And tweeting that brought up all his raggedy old tweets and shame on Kiki but not searching them got darn tweets. Anyway, but I love Kiki Palmer down. I'm a Palmer for life. Oh <laughs> what, what's a, we got to come up with a name. Maybe we're going to be the hands. Like the Kiki palm, Hive. The Kiki hands. Mm. <laughs> palm. Hands. All right. Anyway. Have you seen Gabby? Gabby. Oh, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby. Dang, do they still do fat camp? I feel like that's probably canceled these days. Child, you say it out loud and see if they still do it. <laughs> Fat camp? What? No. Do you want to talk about this Asian doll and Amaretta thing? What's going on with that? You didn't see. So basically, Amaretta gave a shout out to Rico Nasty for her unique style. She was saying that um she really like put on for the alt girls, and I'm not quoting verbatim for all the uh, the Asians attack me, but she basically was giving Rico Nasty credit for being like this alternative black girl and not faking it, like it really being her style. And I guess she, I can't remember. I think she said that Rico Nasty inspired her. I really don't know. But anyway, um Asian doll said that Amaretta is <laughs> she copied. She, Asian Doll said that she started the alternative look and that Amaretta started dressing like her last year. And I just, it's something it very strange oh, yeah. about this generation where they think they invented something that literally has been around since the beginning of time, the beginning of time. If we, here's the thing about Asian Doll that be pissing me off. Every time her name is brought up in the conversation, it's always about somebody stealing something from her. Yeah. And see, yeah. here's the thing. I have done that. I've done. I've. I've definitely witnessed people like legit copy something from me verbatim. I wouldn't go on the internet. I might talk shit amongst my friends or people that's around me. Like, look at this. Like, blah blah blah. I wouldn't get on the internet and do that because at the end of the day, somebody did that attention. shit before me. If, if somebody, you and if you put it on the internet, you want attention. That's just somebody did that shit before me. So I can't. I don't own that. How you know what I'm saying? But you know, if somebody got something from you. She's yeah, talking about, sure. I'm reading this post saying diamonds on the face. I started it. No, you didn't. Yes. Thing. I remember Pink Bitch from Atlanta. It was a rapper named Pink Bitch. Oh, what's that? She just her. had them nails. And the diamonds on her face. Am I tripping or not? No, like, you're not tripping. I forgot about her. Exactly. But that's the thing. No, there is no original thought, especially in 2023. No. People can remix stuff. They can revamp stuff. They can change the color, but style. She's talking about fake. She's talking about crazy eye makeup. I started that skirts and platform boots was my signature look. I she literally, said she was the Dawes Kill. And maybe she was a, a, a brand ambassador or got a partnership with Dawes Kill. But what do you like? Who do you think? I know so many black girls that was wearing that stuff way before them. It's crazy. Yeah, like. What the fuck be going on? I don't know. Yeah, I hate that anytime and I I mean and I and I hate this is one thing too. I don't wanna mistake every time she's in drama, it um it's all always negative, but it's because I only hear about her when I go in the shade room. So because I don't follow her, I don't see the things that I don't see the things that aren't drama, but it's the fact that I can't name a single Asian doll song and maybe because I'm not her target audience, but I can tell you about all these people she don't feel out with. And just being annoying about it. It's just like, girl, Jesus Christ. And I can't say, you know, Amaretta could have been trying to be shady. Who even knows? But people got to learn how to keep a player. Just keep a player. Yeah. You can, you're can. not supposed to let people see you sweat. I don't care if they set your pinkies on fire. You don't feel it? It is not hot. Now what? Yeah. She felt hit because, for one, um, that was partially the reason why. Because I don't know if you knew that, but Rico Nasty and Asian all got into a fight. 
Mm. At, at the Walmart on Howl Mill in the grass. Okay. All right. Um, How long ago was this? It was a minute ago, but it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. I um, don't. I don't condone. I can't watch white fights no more. I'm at that age. <laughs> Me too. You know I what? Can't look at I be no watching more. it. Like it depends on the fight. If it's too, if it's too like too aggressive, then yeah. But if it's like a little I can't punk even watch fight, boxing. I be laughing. Mm-mm, I can't huh? look at it. I'm sorry. I can't even watch boxing. I'd be like, why are these black men beating each other? Up? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't like watching people hurt themselves. Like you break a bone on a video or something. Oh yes. Watch. Oh god! I don't I even want to see people like sweat. That. I don't like videos sweat. I don't want to see blood. I don't want to see you hurt yourself. Just if you might eat ice cream or something, I don't even want to watch you eat. To be honest, so I don't. I don't, don't want to see no videos. How about that? It's just a mess. I don't know. People need to stop saying that publicly because y'all making yourself look dumb. Yeah, it's embarrassing. And but you, you know, know what? what though? Like, this is a generation that whole life is about viral moments. So I guess they just are accustomed to it. But, you know, I just don't, I don't want to become that auntie that's preaching to the kids about keeping stuff off the internet. But I can tell you one thing. It definitely leads to a peaceful life off the apps. That's crazy. She's still going. <gasps> that's crazy. She said, I'm like, she's, I'm right. I don't know what the missing touch is for her. Maybe it's her accent. Um, it's something about Something and about it's not even magic. just girls. It's not even just girls. But if you ever noticed, it's so hard for somebody that is that is actually from Atlanta to be famous. Like we, for real, for real, all the people that claim Atlanta that, that's in the industry, a lot of them are not from Atlanta. None, of, like a lot of them ain't a lot. Even the dudes. Okay. I don't know what it is about people that's from Atlanta. It's so hard for them to get on. Maybe like, because all the ones that's from Atlanta are real. Well, no. Well, think about the, his affiliates, though. They was already in it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if you were some kind of street person, you already in the industry, <laughs> even if we don't know you. you exactly, because you got, like, you got, like, city fame. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, so when, when it be stuff like that, because I, I can even remember when we were, like, freshman year of college and I was listening to like artists that I went to school with just like you remember back in the day we used to have a lot of um yeah franchise Ben Hill squad yes yeah we used to have a lot of clicks but we would listen to that music that would be like the local music that we would listen to exactly and because we we in Atlanta we had a lot of influence and it made and that's why to me I feel like that's what happened with all the Chicago rappers like Von Dirk all of them they was huge in a city so when they had songs they stuff went up and we don't, we might not have heard them, but now we intrigued because we like, who is, I keep seeing him everywhere. Yeah. It was like they already had an yeah. audience. But when you think about like anybody from QC, all these people was tied in already. So people are happy, especially that little baby, because, and Thug, Thug, all these people had a really big name on the streets. So people are investing in whatever they got going on. So that's going to yeah. carry over to. That's probably what it is. She just don't really have people to back her. And then usually when it comes to women, you got to have like, not all the time, but you got to have some sort of like dude to or dude that's higher up in the industry to to kind of co sign you. Oh, but l- she got to in jail. Well, she went oh on love and hip hop, didn't do oh much God. for that. Don't be work for everybody, it sure don't. It only that don't be work for everybody, and you know, it's a hit or miss. I think that you just gotta, you gotta go on there with a plan and execute that plan. But the problem with plans, a lot of people slow, like slow for real. Yeah. So like, all they do is collect a check, a check per episode, and then that just be going it. on their life here now. Yeah. Uh, you know, some things that I've noticed lately, you know, as a person that considers themselves business savvy, when I look at some of these people that's famous, I'm like, dang, you are not handling this well. You need to be. I remember, I'll never forget when I saw um the baby on the Breakfast Club and him talking about he only fly, fly private, and this man had maybe like three, four hits, and I'm like, that money gone. If he could just. Imagine um, spending all your money putting a, a bigger hole in the ozone layer. <laughs> At least put a smaller one and still get to the same you know destination, what I'm and the like, ride the ride will be more comfortable. But it just I, think I be that thinking the like private jet thing, and then this is why I like watching interviews of people who actually are um, that touch grass. <laughs> like <laughs> I enjoy, like even if they music, like sometimes I I don't want to say I force myself to like their music. But it'll make me listen to their music just because they are a real person. Like people like <laughs> Tyler the Creator, 
stuff like that because like I was watching an interview with him and he was saying how like he don't ever use his private planes because that's a waste of money. He's like, it is absolutely I ain't really got nothing money. to do like that. I'm just going to a show. I'm going to a festival. I can get first class and put some exactly. headphones on. How I'll much fine. are you getting paid at this festival that you got to fly a jet? I feel like you got a deficit now. You ain't you ain't make no money. That's what I'm saying. But it I do think that sometimes when artists blow up, they be so up that they don't see the down, the downside anytime soon. So they just like, oh, we, we going to be straight. Because look at how the world humbled the baby. Like, he was up yeah. for real. But because- I, I think it needs to be a point to where, like, if you're doing that type of stuff, it's not hurting your pockets. Like, yeah. somebody but like Beyonce and Jay-Z. No matter it's how many take a minute to get others- to and no matter how many times other celebrities tell people those life lessons, it don't matter until it actually Mm-mm. happens to you. Yeah. I don't know. About if, me I, though, if I was that person, I wouldn't waste my money on that because it's not yeah. like... Now, if I was going to some place like Dubai or a long flight like that, I would probably get a private jet. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to a fucking club appearance in Chicago from Atlanta, I'm not getting on a private jet. That's crazy. And it's like, who's seeing you in the sky? The only picture you got is when you're getting on the plane. Ain't nobody going to wave at you while you up there, so just get on Delta. Yeah, I'll, fly Delta I'll 1. On you fly in business class, the nobody even see you go up there because they got so they got their own way to get in. You still it's crying. literally you got ways love. to get through the airport as a celebrity or a high-profile person that isn't that expensive. Like, Yeah, it's, not, it's like Delta, 350 Yeah, that, that the Delta um, VIP. VIP thing isn't that much money. I've done it three times. Yep, it's $350. It wasn't even that much for me. (laughs) One time I did it, um, I didn't pay for it. I just just got in with Flo. But the other two times, it was like $150. Yeah. Extra. Yeah, if you have multiple money. people, it's only extra. It's only a hundred dollars for the for the extra the extra like per person after the three hundred, which is crazy yeah. when you think about it. So, but you know, I think that people just get excited. And who cares? I mean, it ain't my business. But I just feel like if I ever just got that kind of rich, I'm telling y'all, I'm gonna be so humble. I swear to God, I want this money to last listen, forever. Listen, I I don't know. I think that just because because of social media, before social media. Regular people didn't have access to the things that we got now. They sure did, and, and so now, now, now that they now that it's everywhere, like you get online, mm-hmm. the jewelers are on Instagram. These yep. all type of people on you there. can so ask you, a celebrity where they got their dress from, and they can tell you, and you can now have that dress. It, it used to be trip. magazines <laughs> like putting those looks together. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> Everything is just easily accessible right now. And, but people and also are in debt, for real, for real. People be living these lifestyles and pictures, but they be in a lot of credit card debt trying to put oh, these together. trust me. Trust so me. So it ain't even impressive. When I see some of this stuff, I'm like, child, how many times did you swipe that credit card? <laughs> and how many times did you I, pay the bill? So I was watching, um, I don't know the full story, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving parts out, but I was even watching this, <clears throat> looking at this story on Instagram the other day um, of this girl... And her boyfriend, I guess, they just got locked up on a RICO charge. You seen that? Oh, yes. That credit repair girl? The credit repair girl. First of all, and y'all, don't. No, my. I don't, I don't said it before. I'll be, if your I'll credit be, broke, you need to fix it. Skeptical of the credit, credit report people or credit repair people. But the fact that they that it was going so far that they were, like, killing, uh, murdering other people that was doing credit. It was, like, five people that they don't kill. Oh, I didn't know they actually killed anybody. People. It was a girl that said that she sent somebody to their house. And I, remember I mean, yeah, not, she, she hired people to kill them. Yeah, but yeah. And I remember when thing. that girl told her own story last year, just before any charges was, was filed. But yeah, man, let me tell you something. All these people that's claiming to be millionaires and stuff, ask for their tax returns. Cause there's there's too much going on. I, I and I hate that mean. people get sucked into believing these people's lifestyles that they put on the internet. People be really like... You should, these comments be sad. I'm like, y'all, please stand up. These luckily, people is- I ain't gonna say luckily. Let me, cause it's not lucky, but I feel like since some of these girls are my clients and I have to be around them and I'm in their homes and just around them all the time, um, I can kind of clock a lot of stuff and see what's going on. Majority of the time, these people ain't living right. They ain't living right. It's, and it's gonna catch dirty. up with you sooner or later. I mean, Quick you can't trip get away with, with mold in it. Cause people don't know how to do one or two scams and flip that from there. <laughs> Because if, if I'm being real, I'm not opposed. I'm not. I'm not opposed to people scamming. The government scam us, but the problem is that people. Get I ain't too never greedy. been scammed by the government. Speak on your own. I'm a law-abiding, well, tax-paying citizen with a with a, a legal business. Child, well, I got all that, but I'm still. I still <laughs> understand what be going on. I just think that people get too greedy. You can so do what I you agree. need to do, and they don't know what to do with the money. Yeah, but you need to use that money for. 
investing in, into making more money instead of just going to all these buy scammers that's going to make you hood. look cool and look rich. But that because just goes that to show that people pointless. only want money so they can look like they have money. But I'd rather have money than to look like I got it. Because that girl from Amazon, was it $9 million she scammed? She bought a mansion up the street from the job and bought a Lamborghini. Girl, you from Capital, you from Capital Price, Capital Home. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like you got to go $9 million? Dollars? Let me tell you something. You got to go too far with stuff sometimes. Especially if you know you got that shit illegally. That's what I'm saying. Let me, if I scam nine Girl, million off my job, I'm gonna put them labels in them boxes like I got like the like the bills do. I'm like, Lord, y'all got to the hours give away. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be working not, doubles or nothing. A Lambo is insane. That's crazy. I'm sorry. Yeah, and no. it, it's embarrassing. But anyway, well, now let's she, wrap they, this episode up, huh? Okay. <laughs>